Hello musicians, this is Corey Taylor from skillmusician.com where we are helping musicians improve. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Now we have an exciting lesson on passing chords and chordal moves, but the interesting thing is I'm not teaching the lesson. So let's not waste any time, let's get started. One of the questions I'm often asked is, Corey, who were some of the people who influenced you? And I have four main names that I generally say. One of them is a guy named Eric Miller. Now, if you're not familiar with Eric Miller, Eric is the organist for Kevin Lemons and Higher Calling, which is one of the top gospel choirs in the U.S. Um, he also has toured with Tasha Cobbs, Leonard. He's a phenomenal organist and musician. We met, um, I was coming out of a lesson with a teacher and he was coming into the lesson with that same teacher. And when I heard him play, I said, I want to sound like that. And so literally for the next two or three years, every rehearsal, every event, if I could be there, I was going to be at the event that Eric was playing or the rehearsal he was at or anywhere he was playing. I even came to his house, just Eric, show me how, to, how you do what you do. And he has definitely been one of the biggest influences on my playing. Now, I am excited to present to you uh, one of my close friends and big brothers in the music industry. That is Eric Miller. All right, hey, cool. Thank you, Corey, man. Appreciate that intro. Um, hey, guys. Hope you're all doing well out there. What I'm going to do today is talk about a really simple concept I use to get people to see the music we play. I think it's important to learn how to play chord changes. And sometimes in gospel music especially, we have a challenge to pass our chords from one to the other. So this concept I use is doing a major chord, specifically a triad, going into a diminished chord, and then playing the same triad. So I'll explain that. Let's take C, the key of C I like to use. No sharps, no flats. Easy to visually see, right? So we're going to play a song. And before I do the song, I'll just do the chords. C major. Let's call it chord one. Then we're going to play D diminish. I'm going to call that chord two because in C major, D is the second tone in the major scale. All right, so chord one and then chord two. Now I'm playing the diminished chord in both hands, but I'm doing it on purpose so the sound can be bigger. I don't want it to be too thin when I play. And when I add the melody to the song, I want to have some breath to it. So I'm going to play it like that. All right, the next chord is the same as the first. It's going to be C major, but the bass will be on the third note, which in this case is E. All right, so I'm going to play it together. Simple enough, right? You can do that. One, two, three. Try it. Chord one, chord two, chord three. All right. So the song I'm going to play, the song I heard as a kid, it's Hallelujah. But I broke the song down in small concepts that it's, the song starts on chord one. Hallelujah. Then it goes to chord four, which is also a major chord. Hallelujah. It goes to chord five, right? Now I know in terms of how a chord functions, five is technically a dominant chord. But right now, for the purpose of understanding it, let's look at it like I say major, okay? So it's going to be C major, F major, and then G major. All right? And so before I move on um, to the actual song, again, I'm going to do the chord four is F. What's the whole step above the four? Or the two of F will be G. We're going to play G diminish. I'm going to play F again. All right, so now I got to put this in order. I feel like it kind of moved too fast. Sequence is chord one. The same idea will be on chord four. All right, I'm going to go back and look at that. Chord four is F major, and I am playing F major. Then I'm going to do the triad. Then I'm going to play G, which is the second tone in F major scale, diminished. Then I'm going to play F again with A in the bass. So conceptually, I'm looking at, in my opinion, one, two, three. One, two, three on C. And one, two, three on F. Got it? 
Now we're going to do the same thing on G, which is the 5 in the key of C. So we'll look at G major triad again. If G were my major scale, it would be 1, and then 2 would be the A. So A will become diminished. So I'm going to play that chord as diminishing. It'll sound like this. All right? Now I'm going to add the melody to the song that I referenced, Hallelujah. Here's the melody. All right. I'm going to go that far, okay? That's how it starts out. So now I'll go slower and play it. And the song passes through, but that's the first uh, phrase of that song. And I'll do it again now. I'm going to play the, the board lower. I want a bigger, warmer sound. So I'm playing the same C major, but I'm adding A, which is the sixth of that scale. So... Talk about those little passes in the middle. As I mentioned, they are diminished chords, but what I like to do often is play the chord from left to right. So I'll go. Now I'm landing on a chord tone. We've established in the beginning that we're playing C, diminished, and then C. When I land from my passing chord, that G. It's part of C major. All right, so I'll do it again. I'm going to do the same exact thing on the F. So it'll be diminish right back to the F. All right, the same principle will be applied to the G. We go. All right. Put it back together. way. Another way is we can take the diminished chord, the diminished passing chord, we can play it descending. So instead of going up, I'll go down. When I say down, I'm going from my right to left. So let's do this. Let's see how to catch it. Da, 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 da. Up. Probably should have been on the uh, the A there, but I went a different direction. So I'll do it again. All right. So that's one way you look at this. I have another way we can do it. We can still play the same exact changes. Man, right, wrong. What I'm doing here is make the diminished chord bigger. So now I'm playing it in two hands on purpose to have the sound spread out. Okay, so now we got this idea we have a major chord and a diminished chord. So the, the bass is moving one, two, three on each major triad. What can we do now? We've made the diminished passing chord go from left to right, right to left. Depending on the tempo, we're going to play the same idea 
this time we're going to take the diminished chord and we're going to have it jump up. It'll be a minor third. I'm using the phrase jump. It probably isn't theoretically sound, but but jumping this chord up a minor third so the melody is still there. Alright, so diminished chord. And I'm playing all four notes in my right hand, but technically I could take out, let's say if I left the D out, it's in my left hand. Now I add it on to the C chord. So that's a good sequence. And again, the idea is to use simple ideas to pass from, you know, uh, a diminished to a major. We'll just go, let's say, we're just going to a major generally. Now, the C triad that we're using, I could have started the sequence. I could have gone, let's say, for the five. be a little different I'll explain what those connections were but one of the things I like to also do is take steps to go three two one some keyboard players may play electric piano or organ uh, just as well as you play keys right well if we want organ sometime we can use our foot to go in the opposite direction the melody is still going the same the chords are as well but I can switch directions and I'll start on let's call it three two one so the basic go third second first in respect to each major triad. So on C to be the third, second, same thing on the F. Same on the G. The wheel descend. Right? Three, two, one, three, two, one. So now we connect the whole thing together. So now, I want to share with you, and I'm sure many of you already know, and you may not know, so let's say we're in a 50-50 here. A major chord normally is preceded by a dominant chord, right? We get this, I call it the amen effect. All right? So we did amen, ah, man. Back to C major. All right? So the chords in this song, when I mentioned at the beginning, we're looking at them as all major. So C major is preceded by G dominant seventh. So it's a G triad, but it has the flat edge. Some may call it the minor. But when you get two sevenths, you get a major seventh and you get a flat seventh. So it's the flattest seventh or the dominant seventh, okay? But in the beginning of this song, the way it starts out, we can do that, but it just sounds, I don't know, it's pretty strong. So I just go straight to the major. Now, in terms of counting the song out, I'm going, mm, mm, one, two, three, dominant, then the F. C right here is dominant. And instead of playing the chord in root position, I decided to put the B flat note in the bass. And I'll tie it into Y in a moment. So here's the sequence again. You have that once resolved? 
C7 wants to go to F. So it goes to F major, right? He'll put it together in sequence time. With me? Cool. So we're going to play the same passing on F. Now before we get to the G major triad, G major is going to be preceded by D as in David, dominant seventh. Hit it, oh man. Right? So when I put these um, connecting chords, the dominant chords in there, I'm intentionally playing the bass in this case for each triad. Three, two, one. And I'll go really slow so you can see how me adding the B flat to the C chord before F. And I'll add a C to the bass before the G. So three, two, one would then sound like this. And the way I'm descending with my left hand, that can be our foot. If we're organist playing, I would do the same idea as my left hand would play a triad. I go. This note. Now the song passes through that sequence and it does it twice. The melody in the first time goes da 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 da. We get this passing out of play, you know, something here. And it starts over. Two ideas that happen. It goes through two turns, if you will. Um, and then what you want to do is you take all the ideas or the approaches we took, because it's not a lot of ideas, it's just two chords, right? We want to take those, and you can mix and match. So I'd start out, you know, if I had to play this song, I'd play the first one probably really simple, going one, two, three. Passing diminish. All right. Three, two, one. Connecting. Connecting. You can use that in your playing. Now, the challenge which you'll use this is you'll play the sequence one, two, three over all major triads, all 12 major triads. So let's say we're going to go through uh, and at least get the concept down. One is major, two is diminished, three is the exact same major, right? Let's look at these notes. One, two, three, right? That's C. Let's go to F. One, two, three. We just did that in the song, right? Let's go to B flat. One, two, three. These are the one, two, three of the major scale. All right, E flat. A flat. Right? If we go through all 12, we should expect it to do one, two, three on all 12 keys. For major triads, one, two, three. And keep in mind, 
we're not in a race. We want to definitely, you know, time it out to go with the metronome nice and slow and even so you can get a full sound and get the full idea, you know, fully under our fingers so that it can feel good, right? And we can know what we're playing versus trying to, you know, figure it out. Or sometimes I think as a player, I used to reach a lot. I started out playing by ear and I'd reach and try to figure things out. It wouldn't always be clean. So now I can know, I can intentionally or deliberately play these notes, right? I'm going one, two, three, all the way around the circle. Well, then go back. And don't even worry about three, two, one. Just do one, two, three on each one. Slow and even. F. Now it's B flat. E flat. A flat. D flat. G flat. F sharp is on you. B. E, like Eric. A. D. G. And we're back at C. All right, so we cover all 12 triads. So the concept is this. If I can play all 12 triads, all 12 major triads, I can also then play the song in any key as I choose or use this passing idea. Let's say you want to bump up a little bit. I could start it on the one chord because C major. In the beginning, I said I was going to add a note to it, and I added the sixth degree. Right? That's an A, because A is a part of that note that I'm. Excuse me, the chord that I'm playing. If I put that note in the bass, I still have a C over it. Right? I have to go to F next. So what I did is just accelerate. The time that I played the changes. Doom, doom, dun, dun, dun. That's my C. Diminish. C. Diminish. C7. Alright? Same ideas for the rest of it. And that's just playing with an arpeggio of the diminished chord. So tell me why this is one. Hear that? Mmm. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. I'm just playing with time. And I like to play things that are rhythmic just freely, right? So. All right. So now we have all these ideas. One, two, three. Three, two, one. We can jump the diminished chord in the middle, jumping. And I could have also probably jumped that diminished chord to go to the one. That's pretty cool, right? Diminish, diminish, diminish. See, I went around the C. Thank you so much, Eric, for that lesson. That was amazing. Now listen, everyone, I, can't, I could, wasn't able to put everything he taught on YouTube. It was just so much. So the rest of this lesson, which is another 20, 30 minutes, uh, the rest of this lesson 
is in the premium membership. Um, so for those who are in the membership, you can definitely see this lesson in the courses section. Um, and if you're not part of the membership, definitely join us. Also, Eric is starting his own YouTube channel and I'll put a link to that channel in the description box. You all go check him out, subscribe to his channel and let's support him and help him grow. All right, so remember to like, comment your suggestions below and subscribe to the channel as it really, really helps us. All right, so until the next one, be blessed and happy practicing.